Thank you very much, uh, James. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here again. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd take the topic of are extreme weather events actually getting worse? Um, now, we can certainly ask many questions about the IPCC uh, process and very cogent criticisms of that uh, process have been made and criticisms of the IPCC assessment reports. But I think it's worth just taking them at face value uh, for the time being and looking at what they actually say about extreme weather events because we hear almost daily claims in the media about all these extreme weather events getting worse. Um, so we should look at what the science is actually saying about uh, those things. So my first slide here looks at what Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, actually said just this morning. And uh, he was actually responding to a question about the prospect of a net zero referendum, which unsurprisingly he wasn't uh, all that keen about. Um, and that he used these words. He said, they look at what's happening, that's the public, they look at what's actually happening around the world. They look at the fires, they look at the floods, they look at the hurricanes, and the cre increased incidence of all three, much increased incidence. So this is what our actual world leaders are actually saying. They're actually claiming that all these things are getting much worse. But does that actually tally up with what the scientists are telling them? Or have they not actually uh, been listening? Have they been bad on the detail and actually pushing a certain agenda without respect for what the science is saying? Now, firstly, I, we've seen this graph earlier today, um, and it's worth um, giving thanks to Roger Pilkey Jr., who's done so much excellent work on this uh, subject in going through the most recent IPCC report line by line and looking at what it says about extreme weather. So this presentation relies a lot on what he has found, and so I thank him uh, sincerely for all the work he's done uh, on exposing what the science actually says. So there's a long list of different extreme weather event types here, uh, and they're split into detection and attribution. So firstly, is there actually a trend? And you can see for most of these uh, weather types, flooding, meteorological drought, hydrological drought, tropical cyclones, winter storms, thunderstorms, tornadoes, hail, lightning, extreme winds, uh, there isn't actually even detection of a trend. And then going beyond that, even if there is a trend, is that actually attributed to man-made changes to the climate? And we see for all those ones which we have no detection, there's also no attribution. But actually, for the heat waves, heavy precipitation, ecological drought, agricultural drought, and fire weather, we're told that yes, there is detection and there is attribution as well. So we'll be going through most of those major types of extreme weather and seeing what is actually being said. So firstly, heat waves. Now, you would expect, if the world is getting warmer, that we would be seeing more heat waves. And they've said that actually it's virtually certain there's been increases in the intensity and duration of heat waves and in the number of heat wave days at the global scale. But actually, we should also bear in mind that this goes hand in hand with a decrease in the number of cold days and nights. So actually, when you look at the mortality from extreme heat and extreme cold, we find that globally, there's 20 times as many deaths from the cold. And even in uh, relatively warmer countries, far more people are dying from the cold. So we should be aware of a potential increase in mortality from heat waves, but we also can do a lot to manage that, and we should give thanks for hopefully fewer people dying from cold weather. So there's some good news here 
um, as well as something to potentially be concerned about. And then moving on to heavy precipitation. Now, one of the more confident claims about climate change is actually that there's going to be more moisture in the atmosphere. And that goes down to basic physics. As we increase the temperature, the water holds uh, more moisture. And so, therefore, this is translated into an increase in the frequency and intensity of heavy precipitation. It will likely increase at a global scale over a majority of land regions with good observational uh, coverage. So that's something to bear in mind, but it's only going to be a problem, you would think, if it translates across to actually flooding. But when we actually go ahead to flooding, we see that actually they don't have that confidence to say that flooding has increased. Now this is a graph which shows the observed precipitation over land between 1901 and 2010 and between 1951 and 2010. And this was in the IPCC uh, report. And what you can see is actually there's many areas which are getting drier and also uh, wetter. So there's actually an inconsistency between of saying that all floods, droughts um, are both getting worse. Because clearly, in those drier areas, we may see more droughts. But in those wetter areas, it would certainly be very surprising if we saw uh, more droughts in areas which are get seemingly getting much wetter. So we can't just claim that everything is getting worse, but that's what you hear in the media day after day. Every single type of extreme weather is apparently getting worse. So the IPCC have addressed this head on. They say that heavier rainfall does not always lead to, to greater flooding. Um, and uh, that's not surprising because actually Flooding depends on lots of different factors. Uh, it depends upon the river basin, how it's managed, uh, whether we build on floodplains, uh, how we manage rivers, and the stream flows that we see there. So there's a lot we can do to manage these risks, and there's a lot of factors involved. And we also need to think of the temporal dynamics as well, because heavy precipitation, uh, if it happens on uh, one-off occasions in intense bursts and not necessarily on a sustained basis, then it may not actually translate through to higher levels of flooding. And, and that's what we see. We see that confidence about peak flow trends uh, over past decades at the global scale is low, but there are regions experiencing increases, including parts of Asia, Southern South America, Northeast USA, Northwestern Europe, and the Amazon, and other regions uh, in experiencing decreases. And that translates to the map that we saw earlier as well. So I think an important point here is to actually consider that different areas are, have different needs. Different areas are experiencing different changes in the climates that they're experiencing. So each area needs to adapt to its own circumstances. A one-size-fits-all approach in which we try and change the climate at a global level using trillions and trillions of pounds and hoping that this might alter the temperature of the planet and thereby change the number of extreme weather events is a much more fanciful strategy than actually looking at the local areas and managing local extreme weather events lo locally. Because we've always had extreme weather events. Regardless of the trends, they've always been happening, and they will always continue happening. So we have to be prepared for extreme weather events, and we're better off investing in adaptation measures that will make us better prepared. And we know there's a lot that we can do uh, to be better prepared. So then we move on to drought. Now, in the most recent report, they actually distinguished four types of drought. You've got hydrological drought and meteorological drought, and then you've got ecological and agricultural drought. And while they said the agricultural drought 
they did see, but just medium confidence, that human influence had contributed to changes. Now, what's that agricultural drought? That is the moisture in the soil uh, within one meter. So, yes, that's potentially affected by the climate, but it's also strongly connected with the human management of the land, agricultural practices, um, and how moisture is stored in the land. But with actually hydrological drought and meteorological drought, uh, which is more dependent on actual levels of rainfall, uh, we see that there's still limited evidence and low confidence in assessing these trends at the scale of single regions with few exceptions. And then that uh, the regional evidence on attribution for single AR6 regions generally shows low confidence for human contribution to observed trends in meteorological droughts at a regional scale. So when you hear a claim about droughts getting worse, just cite the science, look at what the IPCC says, and it's much less frightening. It doesn't bear much relation to the hysterical coverage that you hear in the media and from our uh, politicians. And uh, that, uh, oh. sorry about that, I don't know where that's come from. Just need to get back to my presentation. Let's flick onto this one. Thank you. Um, and this is the data from the NOAA, NOAA, which I'm sure you'll be very familiar with. Uh, and you can see the various types of uh, drought, moderate, severe, and extreme drought. And we see very little change uh, in the areas affected. This is looking at satellite data. So it's strong, robust evidence. Um, and we also see uh, natural forces of natural variation uh, that are affecting uh, these trends, like the North Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, the Pacific decadal oscillation, the El Nino and La Nina effects as well. So all of these things are bearing onto the trends. And so we shouldn't automatically assume that it's going to be a anthropogenic climate change related impact. It could be to do with other natural factors as well. And then tropical cyclones. So when Boris Johnson said that hurricanes were getting worse, within the IPCC literature, this is categorized under tropical cyclones. And here we find he's wrong. There's low confidence, actually, in most reported long-term trends in tropical cyclone frequency. And uh, so is what he's saying just isn't stacking up. And uh, on fires as well. There's only medium confidence that weather conditions promote wildfires. But what we see is there's a distinction between fire weather and the actual number of fires we're seeing. So in those areas where we're seeing hotter and drier conditions, and that's not the whole world by any means, that's only certain regions, uh, we see that those areas are, are experiencing increases in the amount of fire weather. But fire weather is only one part of the story because for fire weather to translate into an actual wildfire, you need normally actually someone to spark a fire in the first place. Um, and you need sort of bad forest management. If the uh, forest floor isn't being cleared of scrub, then we'll see a buildup of material uh, that can then fuel uh, more devastating wildfires. Um, so there's... Uh, many factors involved. There may be an increase in fire weather, but that definitely doesn't need to translate into more wildfires, and it hasn't. We look at the graph. This is from NASA. It's very robust because it's now being measured directly from satellites, and we can see that the global burnt area is actually coming down. Um, so yes, there may be more fire weather, but it's not translated into actually more areas being burnt. And then, so finally, I'm going to move on to attribution science because the climate scientists for many years were looking at observations 
and they weren't getting the scary headlines that they wanted. They weren't actually finding that these things were getting worse, and yet they needed to uh, find something scarier that they could feed to the media. So they came up with attribution science, which actually flips science on its head, because what they're doing now is they're saying that here's a model of what the climate would have been without climate change, and then comparing that to reality and saying this event was therefore 30%, 40%, 100% more likely to have happened uh, with climate change. So what they're actually doing is assuming that their models represent the perfect description of reality, and then actually comparing the observations to how well they fit in uh, with the model. So this is a complete uh, flipping around of how science is normally carried out. We normally have a hypothesis, and then we see how the observations fit in with this. This is actually starting with the model, assuming it's correct, and then uh, seeing how much observations fit in with their own constructed reality. And so that new form of science, called attribution science, has brought rise to headlines like this, scientists link Hurricane Harvey's record rainfall to climate change. But this is deeply speculative, and it's totally dependent on assuming that we have uh, robust models of the climate, and that's far from certain. And we know that the scientists who have actually been involved in this new type of attribution science have actually had um, explicitly political priorities. So when they developed this new type of science, they set out to actually influence the climate debate. And uh, there's a science, scientist, Dr. Otto, and she's explained how when she was developing this, she actually was intending that these attribution reports could actually be used to sue people. So she has a sinister objective. She wants to go after people, oil and gas companies, for example, who have actually fueled the modern world as we know it. But she views that as a bad thing, and she wants this new type of science to be used to sue these people. And uh, she's also said that she wants these attribution reports to be used as a crucial piece in getting governments to start changing their policies to create more carbon neutral societies. So when we have a new type of science like this, which has been set out with explicitly political priorities, we should be very, very wary um, of these new kind of techniques. So let's stick to observations. They actually represent what's actually happening on our planet uh, and be very wary of politicized science. And, uh, but also, let's remember that there's a very strong basis uh, within the academic uh, fields to suggest that we shouldn't actually be as worried about many of these types of extreme weather. Thank you.